three, two, one, two, three, two, one. Google living in the private PDF would take you. Educatedinlaw.org. All right, living in the private. Educate yourself, ask questions, verify everything. Disclaimer, the content is provided for educational purposes. Omissions and error accepted. This is not legal or lawful advice. The maxims of the law, consent makes the law. The contract is a law between the parties, which can acquire force only by consent. Another Latin phrase, I'm not going to. The burden of the proof lies upon him who affirms, not he who denies. Okay, so if you look it up, you can even donate to the people that bring you this. I hope you do. Here's the sections in the private that are alive where you stand crossing the line. Your public trust, public servants, your sovereignty, when you were are born, your living identity with the autograph, unalienable rights, your consent, the part of parts of a contract, null and void contracts, rebuke and presumption, the power of words, your credit, your funded, your loan, you funded your loan, the proof of, the burden of proof, excuse me, conditional acceptance, noticing presentments, the court, the law versus statutes, Administrative courts declining to appear, strategies of the court, avoiding the courts whenever possible by Judge Dale, establishing your living and standing in the court, UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, and what is a person now in the private? <coughs> Every natural man, woman is born in the private, whereas a sovereign government of people in excuse me whereas a sovereign government of the people is a public institution and therefore its public servants and its various artificial creations are in the public including its artificial legal person a man or woman can either live in the public in the private or act in the public However, we are trained from an early age to accept a higher authority as normal. Most people exist in the culture of submission and conformity, allowing numerous aspects of their lives to be controlled by government. The populace is manipulated to become dependent, debt, money, and conditioned to become fear full racism terrorism and wars the manner and appearance of authority is usually intimidating by design while the language of legal fiction commerce legalese is deception is deceptive you are indoctrinated excuse me indoctrinated to act in the role of a legal person which is an artificial creation of the state and a debtor Ser serving as surety for the corporate debt of your nation inc or incorporated an artificial legal person is dead and under the foreign admiralty maritime jurisdiction the international law of the sea on the contrary you were born unto your own sovereign estate of mind, body, and soul. As a sentient man or woman, you live within the sovereign common law jurisdiction, the, nation, the national law of the land. Your sovereign jurisdiction includes your inborn, inborn unalienable living rights. Cannot be taken from you without your, excuse me, your fully 
informed and willing consent. Legal person actors for governments, banks, and all corporate entities need to contract with other legal persons, actors, to extract their commercial energy. These legal actors make the presumption that you are also acting in the role of a legal person. In legal fiction commerce, which is why they are seeking a contract performance. They always want the name and often the creation date of the person to establish joinder. Joinder. They need a person because there's there's absolutely no way they can contract directly with a living man or woman. They need a man or a woman to consent to take responsibility in the matter of the person. Unknowingly or knowingly, which is joinder. Combining the fictional you with the real you. When a living name is mirrored by registration of an artificial legal person on the birth certificate, an estate trust is formed, such as Mr. John Doe Trust. Any living man or woman unknowingly in joinder to such an artificial legal person blindly takes responsibility for the alleged debts of the trust as its trustee as its trustee whereas an aware i'm woke living man or woman can separate themselves from the legal fiction batman and become the rightful controlling agent beneficiary or executor for mr john doe trust legal actors will attempt to engage the person by posting letters by phone or on the highway to make an enforcement to enforce a contract misrepresenting a living man or woman as a fictional person because causing unwitting joinder is a crime of personage personage and it is perpetrated by barity excuse me barratry barratry the crime of bringing false claims in court the term barratry appropriately comes from the bar association attempted joinder by any legal person actor is a crime involving deceit section 240 of the nz crimes act now what is the nz crimes act the new zealand parliament <clears throat> under the common law jurisdiction law of the land both parties must enter into every contract knowingly voluntarily or intentionally or the contract is unenforceable and void however under the admiralty maritime jurisdiction the law of the sea consent to contract can be presumed by silent acquiescence unless the party contracted thereby rebutes the presumption of consent so if you do not wish to consent to their contract offer their presentment you must rebut the presumption that you are acting on the role of the fiction fictional legal person you are never obligated to answer questions 
or provide government issued ID. Truly, to uphold your government of the people, it is not your duty to answer questions. It is your duty to ask questions. Uh oh, we lost our place. Good thing we weren't far. You have the right to know who is making a claim against you, the right to know who is the in, who the injured party is, the right to conditionally accept any claim against you upon verification, the right to reserve your rights without prejudice, and thereafter the right to maintain, excuse me, remain silent to avoid self-incrimination. One, two, three, four. The following definitions apply to the de facto incorporated state. So de facto means by right, whether by right or not. In fact or effect, whether by right or not. All right, so the following definitions apply to the in fact. <laughs> in fact or in effect whether by right or not incorporated state in which the agencies of the government are all artificial legal persons citizens are merely corporate franchises here you have in the public versus in the private back and forth so created by state created by nature or god public servant all right, so you can see what's going on there. <clears throat> private. To be in the private is to live in a private capacity as a man or a woman with flesh and blood, arms and legs, a conscious mind, a spirit and life. All men and women are created as equal sovereigns, endowed with unalienable rights, responsibilities, and credit commercial energy as natural men and women they are creditors their right to contract is unlimited you can contract with whomever you want and they have unlimited liability they are outside and above the state from latin privatus set apart belonging to oneself not to the state so do you understand in the private it means set apart not belonging to the state public to be in the public is to act in a public capacity as an accommodation party in joinder to an artificial person created by the government governed excuse me created and governed by the state all men and women who act in legal fiction roles for the state are granted conditional privileges and benefits excuse me prescribed as legislative acts statutes codes as artificial persons, they are the debtors. Their right to contract is limited, and they have limited liability. They are inside and under the state. From Latin, publicus, of the people of the state, done for the state. <clears throat> here you have the dead or alive artificial versus natural if you are in the public you are dead you are going by all the artificial stuff if you are in the private you have recorded your your notices and you are natural the artificial is of the sea you are being ruled over by admiralty law maritime and jur jurisdiction statutes acts 
rules, codes. You are dead legal personality. It's registered. It's an artificial person, a corporation, right? You're a public servant and you are bonded. Public capacity, you are legal privileges and benefits. Granted and revocable, we can taken away. Your suspended license. So, on the other hand, if you are governed by yourself, you are in the natural law of the land, living lawful man. And you see this? You have recorded these documents. If someone registered documents for you, you are you already know if you already know what it means to record documents and you know the documents you recorded again you have set yourself apart right you are considered a natural person a human you are a private and you're free private citizen <laughs> private sovereign see this should say public citizen over here so you cannot be a citizen and sovereign so over here it's private sovereign you're in your operate in your private capacity <clears throat> you acknowledge the lawful rights properties responsibilities inherit and in inviolable Mm. viable excuse me volable invulnerable can't be taken from me broken infringed or dishonored unalienable rights versus your legislative rights one is the creditor and the other is the debtor now when you are an artificial you are the debtor and the state is the creditor when you're in your natural position you are the creditor and the state is the debtor this is why they always say the u.s debt the u.s debt they never say america's debt they say the u.s debt so Here you're as a trustee, and the courts understand that. When you're in the natural, you're the trust beneficiary. Because, well, we'll see where this takes us. You're in the legal commerce as a vessel on the sea versus in the natural, you're a lawful trade man and woman on the land. Man on the land. So. When you have been signing your signature as John Henry Doe, and you have not been signing your signature, John Henry Doe, all rights reserved, or UCC 1-308, the Reservation of Rights. Reserve, reservation of rights, performing promises. So if you are new to this, you have been living your life in the artificial. There is no argument about it. It doesn't matter what you believe. These are the laws that have been hidden from you. Where do you stand? Hmm? Where do you stand? A corporation. A corporation is over nothing. The government is over corporation man and woman is over the government and this is why you always hear people say it, the government infringing on the rights of the man and the woman because so many people are ignorant to this the government feels they have the right to infringe on the rights of the artificial people because they've never studied law and they have not represented themselves in a natural capacity of the land on the land. 
so they feel that they can destroy you anytime they want. A natural man or woman. And of course, down here at the end, excuse me, God is over what we call nature, and God is over man and woman, and then man and woman is over government. Now we let, live at a time that this is a natural order, a natural balance. Now this natural balance is starting to turn and is starting to turn unnatural because why? The amount of artificial people. The more artificial people, the more power the government has. When man and woman sits in the role as government, they use government against man and woman. Government's a building. If nobody goes in it tomorrow, nothing's getting done from what we call government. So these are decisions of men and women. A natural man or woman may stand upon their unalienable rights, unalienable, excuse me, rights being entitled to carry on their private business in their own way. Their power to contract is unlimited. They owe no duty to the state or their neighbors to divulge their business or to open their doors to investigation, so far as it may be self-incriminating. Their rights live permanently in the law of the land. Antecedent to the organization of the state and can only be taken from them by due process of law. They receive nothing from the state beyond the protection of their life, liberty, and property. They owe nothing to the public so as long as they do not trespass upon their rights. Whereas a corporation is a creature of the state, it is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the state. It receives certain public privileges and franchises, holding them subject to statutes of the state and the limitations of its charter. Its privileges are only preserved while it obeys the statutes of its creation. There is a reserved right in the legislator to investigate its contracts to determine if it has exceeded its limited powers. The state have chartered a corporation to make use of certain franchises, can exercise its sovereignty to inquire how those franchises have been employed and whether they have been abused and can determine the corporate books excuse me it can demand the corporate books and papers for that purpose reference hale versus Henkel. crossing the line a sovereign man or woman lives in their private capacity posing unalienable rights and property excuse me, possessing unalienable rights and properties. They may volunteer to act in a public capacity, granted revocable privileges and benefits, which are the more the mere civil rights of an artificial legal person. Governments incorporate firm form, excuse me, governments incorporate form artificial legal persons of many kinds by registration presuming a franchise benefit to the state's legal society legal persons include citizens resident inhabitant driver individual taxpayer voter and owner they are servants transmitting utilities debtors descendants or incompetent wards of the state.
incorporation transfers anything from the sovereign national law of the land, common law jurisdiction, to the foreign international law of the sea, admiralty maritime jurisdiction. Whenever people act in a public capacity as public servants, they are accountable to the state if they fail to perform their role as contracted. Whenever people live in their private capacity as private sovereigns, they are accountable in common law if they cause harm to any living soul. If you act in the role of a legal person, you are crossing the line into the lower world of the legally dead, surrendering you're surrendering your unalienable rights as a living soul. And so here is a chart showing you the real, the living, and the private. Again, it starts with the creator goes into, and this is called universal law, laws of God, creator, universe. Uh, it goes into natural law, laws of nature, common law of the private, cause no harm, cause no loss, cause no fraud to other living souls. And then that breaks into constitutional law. All holders of a public oath of office must serve the private people. And it has lawful, law of the land, and du jour. Here you get into legal, the law of the sea, and de facto. This is commercial law, contract law, law merchant UCC, admiralty law. Admiralty Maritime, which is military tribunal or martial law, is statutory, legislative, public, statutory acts, bills, codes, rules, legislative instruments. Your senators, your politicians write these things. And you have corporations. These are the legal persons. These are franchises, descendants, debtors, wards of the state. Now, <clears throat> Your public trust. People create governments to serve, not to rule. A representative of government elected freely and fairly is, by definition, a public trust instituted to serve private sovereign people in the common law jurisdiction. Such a sovereign government is an unincorporated common law assembly or a body politic, not an incorporated body corporate. The sovereign people place their trust in the governance skills of their elected representatives who are elected into office, not into power. Your representative goes in your place, or instead of you. The sovereign people are the employers of the representatives and all government employees. Without exception, the employees of this public trust are public servants working for the private sovereign people, who are the free men and women of the nation. Everybody in government service, from your head of state, the queen, who governs in the right of the people to the lowest employee, derives their limited authority from the private sovereign people. And each such public servant has a fiduciary duty to serve as a trustee for the private sovereign people who are the beneficiaries of their public trust. Sovereignty resides in the people whose power is the source of law.
Your government is public, employing numerous public officers, each of whom swears an oath of allegiance according to law, as written in the Oaths and Declarations Act of 1957. Your head of state is the principal trustee for the law of the land, the de jure common law acknowledged in the Imperial Laws Applications Act of 1988. After the commencement of this act, the common law of England includes the principles and rules of equity so far as it was part of the laws of New Zealand immediately before the commencement of this act shall continue to be part of the laws of New Zealand. It is therefore the sworn duty of all public officers to uphold the common law embodied in the private sovereign people. If the people's sovereign authority, partly delegated into government, is turned against the sovereign people, the public trust is betrayed. Sadly, centuries of systematic monetary, legal, political corruption have deeply subverted our government, which has been incorporated to serve the debt money system of bondage, extracting wealth for a global power elite who rule at the expense of the majority. Nevertheless, the foundation of our government is the trust, the public trust, over which the people are the sovereign power of the nation. The beginning of freedom is the realization that your public trust is here to serve your life, not take it. The power of your life is found in your self-awareness for we intuitively know that no other man or woman was born as our master freedom is your right but it is not given but exercised and it is held by attention to your living rights <clears throat> public servants serve as private sovereigns who having formed the institution of a freely elected unincorporated government for the benefit of the people are governed by their consent the institution of a freely elected government automatically forms a trust in common law with the people as beneficiaries and their public servants as trustees, the public servants have a fiduciary duty to serve the beneficiaries of the trust. Many public servants swear an oath of office to serve according to the law, which is the de jure common law, also known as the law of the land. Public servants do not swear an oath to serve in de facto admiralty maritime commerce also known as the law of the sea however members of the private bar association swear the oath to serve the bar association which presents a conflict of interest in matters of government and of justice this subversion of the common law court supports the crime of personage knowingly representing a living man or woman as a legal fiction a form of corporation such as an artificial person trust public utility or foundation personages personage is committed by deceptively mirroring the name causing unwitting joinder to a legal fiction and it is perpetrated by bar rat tree the crime of bringing false claims in court the term bar rat tree approximately 
comes from the bar so appropriately <laughs> comes from the bar association your public servants include all officers of the law most frontline police officers however perform two roles as a peace officer they uphold the law discharging their impartial duties under oath according to law which is the de jure common law jurisdiction also known as the law of the land as such they have a fiduciary duty to serve and to protect the living people peace officers swear an oath of office to keep the peace they are protected by a public bond having limited liability as policy officers they enforce statutes which prescribe the legal terms and conditions of contracts with penalties in the de facto admiralty maritime jurisdiction also known as the law of the sea this role dominates their training and time policy officers do not swear an oath to enforce statutes and are not protected by a public bond having unlimited full commercial liability police officers are either on duty under oath and in the public or off duty not under oath and in the private conducting private commerce for your nation inc in admiralty maritime jurisdiction is not part of the sworn duty of a police officer an officer conducting private commerce in support of the debt money system of bondage can be described as a private mercenary abdicting their oath now if you don't know what abdicting means it means I want to say going against, but be with you in contract. Uh, renounce one's stone, so he's renouncing their oath to fail or for, to fulfill or undertake. So, police officers or policy enforcement officers have no jurisdiction over any living, breathing man or woman unless that man or woman consents to that jurisdiction let me stop right there now you're listening to this on this channel so let me explain something to you just because you run your mouth to a police officer stating the law they might call your bluff now if you're not willing to stand up for your rights in court don't don't go any further if you're willing to stand up for your rights in course understand your fight is in court it is not on the street with an officer <coughs> so i read this again all legal jurisdiction over men in court or in, excuse me i didn't read police officers or policy enforcement officers have no jurisdiction over any living any living man or woman unless that man or woman consents to that jurisdiction all legal jurisdiction over a man or a woman requires their consent and so all presentments from a police officer are a service offered by consent they're offering you a service in the form of a presentment it's called a ticket it's important for us to know what people think of our service in new zealand we police by consent and cannot afford to lose the support of the people we serve and there's a link there for it Now, here's the difference between a policy officer and a police officer. Policy officers deal with admiralty mar maritime, commercial jurisdiction. They deal with the law of the sea, 
is an incorporated office, private contractor with no public oath. Right? The officer breaching public oath is in dishonor. Now, again, if it's the same officer, he acts towards one person in one manner, towards another person in another manner. Why? Because this person has their their will, their notices, their declarations on the record. Over here, the person only has driver's license. He consented for permission to drive. He has a marriage license. He, he consented. He asked the state to be married. So these are state policy officers, and they can tell you you're driving bad anytime you want. They can tell you, well, we're going to separate you from your wife for a while. So over here, this person went downtown, and he got a marriage form. Over here, this person drew up their marriage decree and put it on the record. All right, so. Over here, this is of the corporation. Here, it is of the people. When the officer takes you to jail, the officer must establish that you are acting in the role of an artificial legal person, which is consent by joinder in order to exercise jurisdiction over you. And when your paperwork is in the natural, the officer must have probable cause to or an articulable reason of suspicion, excuse me, that you are committing or about to commit a crime. So, this is de facto in practice versus de jour in law. The police cannot stop you, question you, or detain you, or arrest you, search you, or charge you without your consent. We you search your car? Not without a warrant. If you if there is no victim. Now, if there is a victim, things change. <laughs> Ultimately, the administrative courts cannot fine you or imprison you without your consent. But if you at any point, but if at any point you understand, stand under their authority, agree to anything, or give them the artificial legal person name you are consenting. The two basic types of encounters. Consensual, in which you are free to leave at any time. And detention, seizure, arrest, in which you are held by the assertion of assert, excuse me assertion of authority or by the physical restraint against your will uh -oh. in any detention seizure or arrest police officer must have probable cause and or a reasonable suspicion that you are committing or about to commit a crime against a victim the accuser bears the burden of proof to reasonably establish your crime. In any detention, seizure, or arrest, the police officer, excuse me, that was the peace officer, that was the peace officer. Now, in any detention, seizure, or arrest, the police officer must establish that you are acting in joinder to an artificial legal person. Name created by the state and controlled by statute the officer bears the burden of establishing your freely given consent a police officer who stops you in the course of your lawful business without your consent or art art article excuse me 
articulable probable cause is assailing you. Again, the policy offer who stops you in course of your lawful business without your consent or articulable probable cause is assailing you. Dealing with assailants. Identify your assailant, their motive and jurisdiction. Require verification of a crime. No crime, no jurisdiction. Be polite. Stand your, stay on point. Stay, stay on your ground. You must, excuse me, you have the right not to be arbitrarily stopped, detained, or arrested by chance, by whim, or by impulse. There must be articulable and reasonable suspicion. You must articulate, right? Articulable. That you are involved in a crime against a victim and a witness can be a peace officer with first-hand knowledge and evidence who is willing to write an affidavit under penalty of law, penalty of perjury, and full commercial liability, making the accusation of the crime. You have the right not to answer questions. You have the right to provide government-issued ID. You have the right to ask questions to control people police rely on ignorance of the law is no excuse so the police oath they swear that they will well and truly serve their sovereign lady the queen in the police without favor of affection, malice, or ill will, until I am legally discharged that I will see and cause Her Majesty's peace to be kept and preserved, that they will prevent to the best of their, uh, best of their power all offenses against the peace and that while they continue to hold the said office, they will be, uh, excuse me, they will, to the best of their skill and knowledge, discharge all the duties thereof faithfully according to the law. So help me God. After taking the oath, the officers holds the office of constable and is taken to uh, to have entered into the written contract with the Queen. As a head of state, the Queen derives her authority from the people or in the, in the right of the people because sovereignty resides in the people whose power is the source of law. The oath, reside, uh, the oath requires police officers to carry out all duties impartially fairly, with goodwill, and without malice. Discharge all duties to the best of his or her ability and uphold the law, prevent offenses, and keep the peace until legally discharged. All right, we're going to stop right there.